All right, so let's look at this problem. We have moist air. It's at 30 degrees C and 200 kPa and 50% relative humidity. And it enters a heat exchanger operating at steady state with a given mass flow rate of 600 kilograms per hour. It is cooled at constant pressure until it's 20 degrees C at the exit. Okay, kinetic potential energy effects can be ignored. Determine the exit temperature below which condensation will occur in degree C, and then the rate of heat transfer. So what do we have? We have a device, it's a heat exchanger. We have the inlet and outlet. And so this is humid air or moist air. And so in at one, so we have the temperature at one, that's the dry bulb temperature of 30 degrees C. And we have the pressure at 1, 200 kPa, and it's constant pressure. So this is state 2. The pressure at 2 is 200 kPa as well. And the relative humidity is 50% on the inlet. The mass flow rate is given to be... Now, there's a couple things we need to start talking about. This mass flow rate. Is it the mass flow rate of the dry air, or is it mass flow rate of the dry air plus the water vapor in the air, which would be the mass flow rate of the moist air? It's not really specified. Let's just leave it as 600 kilogram per hour, and we'll deal with that and discuss it more. The next thing we need to talk about are these pressures. Um, once you start solving um, heat transfer problems with moist air, and it's maybe doing some out or it's you know sensible heating latent heating or cooling of the air you really want to use the psychrometric chart but this right here at this pressure is not 1 atm it's significantly above 1 atm so you cannot use the psychrometric chart to solve this problem you have to do it the old-fashioned way bang it out with equations doing the conservation of dry air, conservation of water vapor, changes in enthalpy, etc. Okay, so let's take a look. What else did they tell us? They told us that T2, the exit temperature, was 20 degrees C. Okay, now the first part, they want to get the exit temperature below which condensation will occur. The really asking you to calculate based on this input right here what is the dew point temperature because if you cool it to the dew point temperature that's the temperature at which condensation will start to occur so it's it's really a property of the inlet air okay um, so how do I calculate the dew point temperature? Well, the way you calculate it is you calculate it's the, the saturation temperature for the partial pressure of the water vapor in the moist air mixture. Okay, how do I calculate this partial pressure of water vapor in the moist air mixture? Well, you're given the relative humidity, and the relative humidity is defined as a ratio of mole fractions. It's the ratio of the mole fraction of the vapor that's in the current moist air versus the mole fraction of the vapor if it would be saturated air at the same dry bulb temperature. Okay, that's kind of the definition, but we have seen where it is transferred or equal to a ratio of partial pressures. The partial pressure of the vapor that's currently in the moist air divided by that partial pressure that the vapor would exert in the moist air if it would be saturated air. And this is simply the saturation pressure for that dry bulb temperature for the air. So if you're trying to calculate PV, it's just the relative humidity times PSAT at that dry bulb temperature. Okay, well, 
what is P sat at 30 degrees C? And so let me just substitute some numbers. The relative humidity is 50%. And you look up in the table, uh, let's say table A2, at 30 degrees C, you find that saturation pressure, and I put it in kilopascal, but you can put it in bar, whatever, 4.246 kPa. So that's our partial pressure of the vapor. It's 2.123 kPa. Now we go back, I'm running out of room, and say the dew point temperature is that saturation temperature for a saturation, uh, a partial pressure of 2.1, um, here, PSAT, not that, TSAT, when the pressure is 2.123 kPa. And again, you look it up in table A2, and you find that that dew point temperature with little interpolation is 18.4 degrees C done. All right, so that's part A solved. Part B, what is the rate of heat transfer? Well, we do a control volume analysis. And we can either put the Q dot going in or Q dot going out. Well, look, at it's cooling off. So let's put the Q dot going out. So we're talking about a positive rate of heat transfer and it's out of the system. We do an energy balance and you can write it a couple different ways. The fastest way to write it would be that we're going to have the mass flow rate of our dry air times the humidity of our air. This is going to be our moist air mixture but it's going to be per kilogram of dry air. And that's the uh, enthalpy, mixture enthalpy um, coming in minus the mixture enthalpy exiting. And that will be the Q dot, heat, rate of heat removal. Okay. Well, we need this enthalpy. So the inlet mixture enthalpy will be the enthalpy of the dry air coming in at 1 plus omega 1 times h of the vapor, we'll just write h of g at 1. That, this is using that notation subscript g, which is the saturated vapor at that temperature, the dry bulb temperature coming in. So this is the dry air component. This is the water vapor component. Now because our exit temperature is above our dew point temperature, there's no change in humidity ratio. So omega 1, it, it's like the water vapor, all the water stays in the vapor state through the system. Nothing condenses so that omega 1 is equal to omega 2. The humidity ratio does not change. Again, the ratio is the kilograms of vapor per kilogram of dry air for omega. Okay. So uh, likewise, H2 will be this H dry air at 2 plus omega 2 HG at 2. If you wanted to, you could combine these. And so I'm going to write it like this. Q dot, what we're looking to solve for is mass flow rate of the dry air times you'll have the enthalpy of dry air 1 minus enthalpy dry air 2 combining those two terms, and then we'll have this constant omega. I could even drop the subscript, omega, omega 1, omega 2, they're all the same. And then we're going to have multiplying h of g at 1 minus h of g at state 2. All right, so a little bit of work here we have to do. What is the um, mass flow rate of the dry air? Well, as a very good approximation, it would be right here. It would be very close to 600 kilograms per hour. But if I'm really f tedious, what I need to calculate is omega and then adjust for it. Let me do that. I'm going to scoot down a little bit here. So what is 
my omega, my humidity ratio, let's say it's state one. Well, the equation is 0 0.622 times the partial pressure of the vapor coming in at one divided by the total gas pressure minus the partial pressure of the vapor coming in at one. So um, you say, I know um, some of this information and we calculated some of it already. So this was, if I wanted to, I should have put maybe a subscript one here and a one here. Okay. So this is 0 0.622 times 2.123 kPa divided by 200 minus 2.123 kPa. And so I'm going to, I got to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to, well, we'll just continue on. Omega 1 is equal to the humidity ratio is equal to 0 0.00667. That's a small number. So because it's a small number, there's very little difference between the mass flow rate of the moist air and the mass flow rate of the dry air. Well, let's work this out a little more cleanly. What is the mass flow rate of the moist air? Well, it's the mass flow rate of the dry air plus the mass flow rate of the water vapor in the dry air, the mixture. Okay, well, what's our equation for the mass flow rate of water vapor? Wouldn't it be the mass flow rate of the dry air times omega, the humidity ratio? Yep, that sure is. So you find the mass flow rate of the dry air times 1 plus omega. And if you look at it, 1 plus omega is 1.00667. So the difference between the mass flow rate of the dry air and the mass flow rate of the moist air is negligible. This, this number is so close to 1. Engineering approximation, it's 1. So I'm just going to call this the mass flow rate of the dry air and be done with it. It's only given really one or two significant digits anyway. Here we are trying to struggle with way out here in the decimal places. Okay. So we're going to say that this is 600 kilograms per hour. So I would say, check, I've got it. Check, I've got it. How about these change in the enthalpy of the dry air? We'll replace that by the specific heat of the dry air times the temperature one minus the temperature two. Okay, that's that's good. And uh, so what is this specific heat of the dry air? That's 1.005, everybody uses that. It's kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And you had a temperature change, it came in at 30, went out at 20, that's Kelvin change, delta, 10 degree Kelvin change or 10 degree C temperature change, either one. And then I'm going to put some numbers in here, 600 uh, kilograms per 3600 seconds. All right, we're calculating Q dot plus 0 0.00667 times, now I need that, that the uh, saturated vapors enthalpy at 30 degrees that's the incoming um, I gotta write it down here sorry just running out of room again it'll be two five five six point three kilojoules per kilogram and then the enthalpy at 20 degrees C of saturated vapor that will be two five three 8.1 kilojoules per kilogram and then I'm going to close that bracket with this bracket right here and then you can jump on the calculator cancel your units and Q dot comes in at 1.695 kilowatts too many digits 1.70 kilowatts answer for part B so one of the lessons is, um, I know that you get used to using the psychrometric chart, but the psychrometric chart that we have in our textbook is good at 
one atmosphere pressure and that's roughly 100 kPa and this is 200 it's high pressure don't use the psychrometric chart knock it out like this by doing the hand calculations all right hopefully that was helpful